Hello there, brethren. So, first of all, I would just like to apologize uh, for my last study that I made. The Lord convicted me in my heart about it. Um, he helped me to realize that I was being quite careless uh, with that study. Um, in the way I constructed it, um, I had like three different topics trying to cram them into one study. It made the video way too long and... Um, it wasn't respectful of your time, and I wasn't loving my neighbor as myself, I realized, and I was in sin, so um, that's why I privated the video, and I'm very soon going to delete it. Um, and uh, so uh, I, I wrote down the wrong scriptures as well uh, during the study, which delayed it even further, made it even more uh, lengthy and long, uh, so... I hope that this uh, more focused uh, study is a lot more helpful to you, brethren. I realized that I was trying to make this uh, analogy um, about the staircase and uh, me being on the staircase and then me walking down from the staircase at the end of the video. I realized none of that was important. And I realized that getting the word of God out there to you, brethren, about this topic is a lot more important. Uh, so I'm going to try uh, try my best here. Um, hopefully the Lord will facilitate uh, my words and facilitate uh, uh, me in, in portraying uh, the scriptures to you in a lot more clear way and uh, in a way where I don't commit so many errors. <laughs> and so I re reconstructed the study to focus on unity, the importance of unity in the body of Christ, the importance of unity in Christ, um, and just focus on unity. And so let's begin the study, all right? So we're going to start with six mentions of where in the New Testament it is commanded for us to be of one mind. Um, so we're going to, uh, let's turn in our, in our Bibles, in our King James Bibles, to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. Now feel free to pause the video uh, at any moment to to really meditate upon the scriptures that I'm giving you. Uh, just remember, it doesn't matter what I tell you, but it matters what the words of God tell you. Okay, and um, you know whatever I say, look at the scriptures. Okay, and make sure I'm not telling you anything that's not in the scriptures. All right. So, like I said. Feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast or you would like to meditate upon the scriptures that I'm giving you um, and would like to read the context of it or whatever it is, okay? So let's continue. Um, Romans chapter 15, first mention here, 5 and 6. Now, the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one one mouth glorify God. Right? Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you can see there, it says, One mind and one mouth, glorifying God, that we be like-minded one toward another. All right? So now let's go to the second mention. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 13. <clears throat> Verse 11. Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind... Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Praise the Lord. All right. Now let's go to the next one here. The third mention. Let's go to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. Uh, chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that of God. All right? Now let's go to the fifth men or to the to the fourth mention uh, Philippians so chapter two so very close to here okay so you don't have to turn too far for this next mention 
for the fourth mention here in uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, now let's go to the fifth mention, First Peter. This is uh, not exactly in order, uh, but I saved the, the last mention uh, for last for a reason. All right, so but we're gonna be on, we're on the fifth one right now, so just wanted to mention that at least before we get there. Uh, so let's go to First Peter chapter three, eight and nine. It says, "Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous." not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrary wise blessing knowing that ye are uh, therefore or thereunto called and that ye should inherit a blessing all right now let's go to first corinthians chapter one the sixth mention first corinthians chapter one ten through thirteen It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I of Cephas, or I of Christ, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? All right, there it is. There's a sixth mention telling us to uh, that we all should speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among us in that we should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment very important to i think that was uh, the last verse really culminated everything and put it all together for us of how important it is for us to be of one mind in christ okay now there is liberty the scripture speaks about liberty on three issues now i'm not going to turn there uh but please pause the, i'm going to give you the scriptures and uh, please pause the video if you feel the need to, if you really want to search the, these this topic, you know. But for the uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to turn there, okay? Um, so and, and also for the sake of being on staying on topic, okay? So the first the first thing that we Christians have liberty on is head coverings for women. All right, First Corinthians chapter 11 verses 3 through 15 all right next is uh eating meat or being a vegetarian or being or eating vegetarian right um not necessarily being a vegetarian but eating vegetarian uh so let's go to uh well no, don't let's not go to right now but what i'm trying to say is uh you can turn to uh, uh if you want to see that uh, romans chapter 14 uh verse 14 through 23 and Romans chapter 14 verses 1 through 4 okay and then there is also in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 and verse 17 okay now the another uh, issue uh, or subject right where there is liberty for us Christians is the Sabbath day or holy days okay so that's gonna be Romans chapter 14 verse 5 through 13 and colossians chapter 2 16 through 17 okay so now you know about the the 
um, the issues on liberty okay and just remember this that we are not justified by the law but we are justified by faith and that faith is in the grace of God in where which we are saved okay by the grace of God we are saved through faith remember that folks not of works not of the law all right so as we continue um, let's continue with the study uh, let's turn to uh, Psalms chapter 66 Psalm, Psalms chapter 66 so now what if we are not of one mind uh, apart from those liberty issues what if there's something else that I didn't that that, that that scriptures are not mentioning right what if there's something else that we don't agree with um, hmm well Psalm chapter 66 let's see here Psalm yeah chapter 66 verse 7 says he ruleth by his power forever his eyes behold the nations let not the rebellious exalt themselves Selah so as you can see there um, when we rebel against the Lord uh, we exalt ourselves uh, so when we rebel against his word when we sin against God we exalt ourselves in our own ways remember that okay um, so now let's turn to uh, James the book of James James let's see here James chapter 1 verses 21 through 25 <clears throat> Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Um, I'm just going to stop there and pause there for a second. Now keep this in mind that we should with meekness receive the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. All right. So when we rebel against the Lord and His word, we are not uh, receiving with meekness his engrafted word, right? So if it's not meekness, what is it, right? Think about that. Ponder on that, okay? Um, so we must be meek towards the word of the Lord through the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Now let's keep reading. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, all right? Now let's keep reading here in verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, all right, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Alright? So, uh, something to take from this, what did I write here in my notes? We must receive God's word with meekness. Yes. And also, uh, if, if, if we be a hearer of the word and not a doer, we begin to be like a man looking at himself in the glass or in a mirror, right? You're looking at yourself in the glass in the mirror for too long that you're not looking down at the scriptures. You're not receiving with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord. Um, and uh, you're, you're going and turning to your own ways and not turning to the ways of the scriptures, to the, to the ways of God. And uh, that is very much a rebellious nature, a selfish, vain nature that we all um that we all show when we rebel against his word all right and we are very much like a like a like a man that b beholds his natural face now keep that in mind natural face in the glass um and then look what it says in verse 24 it says uh for he beholdeth himself goeth his way and straight away forgetteth what manner of man he was you begin to forget what matter of man you actually are or was right because you begin to think of yourself higher than you are you begin to think of yourself as uh you know 
Um, when you go your way, you think that you're right. You're, you go your way, you're justifying yourself by your works. A lot of the time, this is what ends up happening. We justify ourselves by our works, and we realize that, we, and we forget to realize that we are sinners. For God died for the ungodly, He died for sinners. Right? And uh, when we forget that we are sinners and we think of ourselves to be sinless saints or we begin to think of ourselves uh, to be more than we are, uh, we become vain and unto, you know, and, and unto every good word we, we become reprobates um, because it's not done in faith. So whatsoever is not done of faith is sin. The just shall live by faith. We are justified by faith, um, not by uh, sight. And not by works of the law, right? Okay. So, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 here. Proverbs chapter 3, 1 through 8. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. The heart, again. It's talking about the heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Wow, praise the Lord. Um, again, it's telling us, uh, folks, uh, to lean not to our own understanding and uh, to not be wise in our own eyes, right? So again, uh, look at the scriptures. Look whether there's liberty on certain issues or not. And if there isn't, then there's only one right truth. There can't be multiple truths. If it is that the Spirit of the Lord is in us, we will have the mind of Christ. And if we don't have the mind of Christ, uh, and we begin to to be uh, to cause divisions among us, um, unrighteous divisions among us, then, folks, uh, how can we be then unified in faith? How 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 can we be uh, in unity, when there is so many different opinions out there, we should all be of one mind. Okay, now let's continue. So remember, lean not to your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 14. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Wow, I mean, that's that's exactly what will happen when you turn to your own way um, and do whatever is right in your own eyes, right? And uh, it will lead to death, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God, right, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, so let's go to Proverbs chapter 21 now. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. The heart. The Lord ponders the hearts. He seeks and searches the hearts of men. Alright, so you cannot fool God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. Remember that, folks. Alright. For the Lord pondereth the hearts. Now let's go to Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, 7 and 9. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrine and commandments of men. Again, uh, when our heart is far from the Lord, we begin to, to, to worship the Lord in vain, honor Him with our lips in vain, 
uh, we begin to teach the doctrine and commandments of men instead of teaching what's actually in the word of the God, in the word of God, in the word of the Lord. And our motivations and our intentions are corrupted when we go our own way and seek our own paths and are not guided by the word of the Lord and by his ways, okay? So be very cautious and uh, with what you're doing in your life and why you're doing it. And, you know, make sure that what you're doing is aligning with the scriptures, all right? Uh, let's go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. And just remember this before I go to Titus chapter 1. Uh, don't honor or worship the Lord in vain, and the Lord knows what's in your heart. Okay? Did I repeat myself there? Maybe. That was in my notes. I just thought I'd mention that uh, in case I didn't mention it. But uh, anyways, uh, Titus chapter 1, okay? Verses 15 through 16. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God... But in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. All right. Um, in the book of Psalms, it says that every man at his best state is altogether vanity. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, uh, it mentions that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Uh, so, you know, again... We're not justified by the law. We're not justified by our good works. We're justified by faith in His Word. And then comes works afterwards. After we have, we're doing it but for the right reasons. Through faith. And have the Holy Ghost guiding us. And have the Word of God guiding us. In not our own selfish, vain ways. Right? That's why the lost world can do nothing good. Even if they do good works. It is filthiness. It is uh, vanity. Um, and it is, uh, you know, as filthy rags, the righteousness of the lost world, the righteousness not done in faith is as filthy rags unto the Lord. All right. <clears throat> That's why when we are pure, when we live by faith, all that we do is pure. And it's an amazing thing. But when we are defiled, unbelieving, and disobedient nothing is pure but even our conscience is defiled all right that's some strong words right there and i hope that it convicts you brethren out there and any of you lost converts out there as well hope it pricks your heart and i just dropped my notes one second here uh, fallible man always making mistakes here i'm a I'm a sinner. Are you a sinner? <coughs> Forgive me. <coughs> <coughs> All right. So now let's turn to the book of Proverbs. We're going to the book of Proverbs. The book of wisdom. Boy, is there wisdom in the book of Proverbs. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 16. Wisdom, she crieth in the streets. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. These six things doeth the Lord hate. So we're going to go and speak about the things that the Lord hates. Get ready for this. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Seven. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, Feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. So, we are speaking about unrighteous division, unrighteous discord. You know, oh, I can't, I don't think there can be righteous discord. But what I'm trying to say, folks, is that having strife, having contention, having discord among brethren, that is unrighteous division. All right? And 
because that's one of the things that the Lord hates. He, he hates those that sow discord among brethren. Very important to remember and you know, um, ponder and meditate about uh, the things that the Lord hates and make sure that you hate them as well. All right. Make sure we are of one mind, with the mind of Christ, hating the things that God hates, hating the things that Christ hates as well. You know, we are bought with a price. Remember, folks. And uh, one of the most important commandments, well, the most important commandment is to love God uh, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. You are to give it all up for the Lord. Give it all up. So let's go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. And I speak not only to you, to, but to myself. All right. We have to give it up. Give it all up to the Lord, folks. Brethren. All right. Uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 17. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. Remember that, folks. That uh, Christ cannot be divided. All right? And if he's divided, he cannot stand. All right? So we got to make sure that we stand firm in our faith. Stand fast. Be strong in faith. Having the whole armor of God on us. All right? Resist. Be sober. Be steadfast. Resist the devil. Re resist your vain thoughts. Resist your flesh through the word of the Lord. Seeking comfort in his word. Praise the Lord. All right? So that's unrighteous division. All right, now let's talk about what righteous division is. All right? Righteous division. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. We are already there almost, aren't we? Yep, Luke chapter 12. 51 through 57. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on the earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Huh? Jesus came not to bring peace, but division? Yeah. For from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So as you can see there, brethren, before I continue reading, um, we should be separate from the world. We should There should be division from the world. All right? Division from the lost. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? Remember that. All right? Let's continue here. Uh, and he said also to the people, When you see a cloud rise out of the west, straight away you say, There cometh a shower, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern the time, uh, discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves, now listen to this, judge ye not what is right. So why are we not of ourselves as brethren uh, judging what is right? You know, what, what ends up happening is that we don't, we, we stop judging what is right. And we start judging, uh, we, we start compromising instead of judging. Judging is so important to the Lord, you know, it, you know, it, it judging between ourselves and, uh, examining what we're doing and, and, uh, comparing it to the scriptures, making sure we're not falling out of line out of the scriptures and showing love to our brethren by judging one another is very important. And that's righteous division. You understand, brethren? That's motivated by the Holy Ghost and the Spirit, the, the fruit of the Spirit. All right? All right, so now... Um, <clears throat> all 
Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 verse 34 says, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. 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 Not peace but division. Right? All right, let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'll try to go quickly here. I don't want to make this study too long for you, brethren. I'll be respectful of your time. John chapter 14, 23 through 24. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. So there it is. If you love God, you'll keep his words. If you don't love God, then uh, you will not keep his words. Simple as that, folks. Um, and again, that is showing... Um, let's see what it says in, in John chapter 7. All right, That judgment... Uh, you'll see... It. The Lord commands us to, to judge righteously and to divide within ourselves righteously. All right. It says right here in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 24, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So if we are to judge between our brethren, we must judge righteously through faith in His Word. You see? Love the Lord by keeping His Word. If you don't love the Lord, you're not going to keep His Word. And, yet, and so your judgment is not true. Your judgment is unrighteous. And... And uh, and it becomes you sowing discord among brethren because you're turning to your own way, looking at a glass, looking at yourself, and you're not looking at the scriptures. Receive with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord. All right. Not with pride. All right. Think about that, brethren. Ponder on that. The Lord pondereth the hearts. Remember that from the book of Proverbs as well. So judge righteous judgment. All right. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians. Now let's see the um, what that actually entails. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Essentially, what, what that's saying, anathema maranatha, is let him be accursed. Okay? Did you hear that? So if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. Anathema maranatha. So first, you got to judge righteously. Um, and, uh, you know, after the first and second admonition, if they, re if they reject your counsel, the, they reject the word of the Lord, they don't, they don't, they don't uh, want to adhere to your counsel, to the word of the Lord, and make sure that you're you're judging righteously, right, through His word and not through your opinions. Uh, let him be anathema maranatha. After the first and second admonition, reject. Um, it's in another place. I can't remember the scripture right now. But uh, anyways, let's continue. Uh, so very strong language. Uh, so judgment is very much necessary uh, but that's righteous division, right? And there's unrighteous division and righteous division. Remember that, folks. And uh, remember, unity, how important it is. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, 19 through 26. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. All right. <clears throat> 
Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. All right. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So that's a responsibility, brethren. Uh, when we judge righteous judgment. All right, and I think uh, Second Timothy chapter uh, chapter two nineteen through twenty six very very well explains that what ju righteous judgment is and our responsibility as Christians uh, towards other Christians. All right, to other brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, so hope that helps you understand why I'm doing the things that I'm doing and why I made this study. And why I remade the study. <laughs> so let's go to Psalms chapter 1. Or I guess it's not a chapter, but you know what I mean. Psalms 1. <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Right? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. The, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff with the wind, uh, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Praise the Lord. So, so the righteous, those that are just in, in, in God's eyes, right, will delight to meditate on His Word day and night. To meditate in the law, in His law, right, day and night. Praise the Lord. It's an amazing, I, I, I really like that uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm, chap, Psalm, uh, Psalm 1, Psalm 1, very good Psalm and edifying and um just like I hope that this study is edifying to you, brethren, as well. Because um, hopefully it'll uh, guide you to and lead you to uh, to meditate on God's Word. Alright, so now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go to 1 Corinthians... Where is that? There it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 2... Um, 6 through 16. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the, wor the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For, that, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but, with the, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man... Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he, 
may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. Be of one mind in Christ, folks. If we are in Christ, we should have the mind of Christ. We should love our the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> For 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 through 7. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Did you hear that, folks? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Praise the Lord. For we preach not ourselves, praise the Lord, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Praise the Lord. Amazing. Amazing what the word of the Lord is telling us here, folks. But... We have, the, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I can't praise the Lord enough. You know, I always say, this verse is important. This verse is important. All of the Bible is important, folks. You understand? It's, it, it, this is spirit. This is life. And without it, you're dead. This, this book give us, gives us life, eternal life. It is so that we might believe the record of the only begotten Son of God. The record that has been given to us of the only begotten Son of God so that we might have eternal life. Wow, it's an amazing thing. Let's go to the book of James. Let's go to the book of James. So as you can see there, it is hid. The gospel of the Lord is hid to them that are lost. Even them false converts out there, right? Let's go to uh, James. For they profess that they know God, but unto, you know, but reprobate unto every good work, disobedient, right? James chapter 4, uh, 1 through 10. Uh, From whence came wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. That ye may consume it upon your lust, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Wow, powerful words. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee uh, from you. There it is. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> when we submit ourselves to God, we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so many, so much wisdom in the word of the Lord, uh, brethren. So much correction and instruction in righteousness. We, that's why it's so important for us to meditate on his word day in, day and night. Um, okay? And to, with meekness, Receive the engrafted word of the Lord. All right, so now uh, let's go to uh, James. Oh, we just read that one. <laughs> Forgive me, brethren. Let's go to Hebrews. Now, why do lost people, why do false converts not read the Bible? Why do they not meditate on the word of the Lord day in and day and, and day day and night? Why do they not meditate on the law of the Lord day and night? Well, there's a reason for that, folks. Uh, Romans, uh, Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. 
For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see, you know what false brethren don't want to meditate on the word of the Lord? You know why they cause division, uh, unrighteous division and discord among brethren? You know, it's because, because they're so afraid of what the Lord, the word of the Lord is able to do. They're so afraid of reading the book, the book because the book will discern the intents and thoughts of their hearts. You see, this book will slice you open, will slice open your heart, and then therein reveal what is truly there. And that's why false converts and people that are lost, people that are being rebellious, you know, brethren that might be being rebellious, don't go to the Word of God because they don't want to be convicted. They don't want to be caught in the heart. You see what I mean, folks? That's why with meekness we should receive the engrafted Word of the Lord. With meekness. Humble yourselves. All right. Let the Word slice open your hearts. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. But, 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 but Brian... What about all those times in the Bible where it doesn't clearly condemn a sin? Does that give us an excuse to, to just believe whatever we want? No, I'm going to tell you why. Because you're, uh, every answer to every question is in the Word of God. And if you can't find it, it's because you're blind. And you're being prideful. Alright? Every single uh, sin is condemned in the Bible. Every single sin. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 1, uh, 16 through 18. And I charge you, and I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. For the judgment is God's. Did you hear that, folks? And the, the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at the time all the things that which which ye should do. There it is, brethren. How in even in, 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 in these times, the Lord was appointing judges, right? And these judges were were told that who has the final word? If something is too hard between you, bring it unto me, and I will tell you all the things that ye should do. It's so clear, folks. Go to God in prayer. Ask Him when the things are, are too hard for you to find. Ask the Lord for wisdom, and He will give it to you. Ask Him for the answers that you seek in His Word. There is all answers to every sin you see, it, it condemns every sin. The Bible, there is not one sin that is not condemned in the Bible. All right? Don't look for loopholes. Don't look for excuses for your sin. But with meekness, with meekness, receive the, the, the engrafted word of the Lord in your hearts. Allow the word of God to cut open the true, uh, your, your heart to reveal the true intents and thoughts that are therein. That's that's what we must do. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 21. You know what? Uh, yeah, Proverbs chapter 21. Here it is. It says, To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Praise the Lord. You see... I don't care how many sacrifices or gifts you give you give it to the Lord. Uh, you know, that's not what the Lord, it pleases the Lord. The Lord pleases, it's uh, more acceptable to Him to do justice and judgment. To judge righteously within ourselves. To judge what is right. And to receive with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord. So that He may correct us and sanctify us. For his purposes. Praise the Lord. Alright. So now. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 13. 
Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13 says, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Praise the Lord. Um, are you despising the word right now? Um, well, let me tell you, um, you're going to be destroyed by the Lord. All right? For the wages of sin is death. Uh, you might be saved, but... Uh, you're not fearing God right now if, if, if you're looking for excuses and loopholes in His Word. Um, you're looking to other sources, other books, words of men to justify your sin. You're going to the Greeks, you're going to the Hebrews to justify your sin. Shame on you and I hope that the Lord rebukes you and cuts open your heart and reveals the true intents and thoughts that are therein. Receive with meekness His Word. All right, let's go to Psalm chapter 133. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Psalms 133. Right here. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down on the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forevermore. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to the final verse of the culmination of this study. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians in the New Testament, folks. Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 16. Here it goes. Therefore, the prisoner, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, with forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace did you hear that folks endeavoring to keep the unity are you endeavoring to keep the unity there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, the, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up afar above all heavens, that he might fill all things. He and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by the, uh, and compacted, well, 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 compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself, in love praise the lord i hope this study was edifying to you brethren and just know that uh, we should endeavor endeavor uh, for the unity in christ endeavor to unify 
all of us and uh, you know it really is a blessed thing when brethren dwell together in unity and uh, when you really feel the presence of the Lord when you really feel the presence and the love of the Lord working through us and um, just be strong be strong in faith brethren and be meek and, and receive with meekness the engrafted word of the Lord in your hearts and allow the word of God to open and slice open your hearts the word the, the, the sword of the spirit allow it to discern what is truly in your heart so that you might be uh, sanctified uh, for the use of the ministry for the use that God has and for, the, for the purpose that God has planned for you um, that's it for this video and uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.